start our poetry reading. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks to Alex for hosting the show and the reading. Uh, thanks to Amy and Oliver for all their help. Oscar. Oscar, sorry. <laughs> we just met today. Come on. Um, all one was the same. But so we're going to first play a recording by Sarah Serpus. She could not be here because no one knows if she was in LA or New York. Uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, have you started recording? Yes. All right, should we start? If I could drop out of the world, 
I would write onto Mars, then I'd be a settler, and my head would explode, like in that Simpsons episode that made me cry. Thank you. to come true in reverse. The weeping archive empties out the holy. I am stronger than paradise. Like perfect lovers, the clocks always unsink. Within us, the endless dead are waking a likeness. Papa de Vase Soto Voce, all writing is pink shit. Since these symbols and all symbols are drawn, infinity separation from all symbols must be shown through drawing. It's called test. These are the most recent poems I've written, so I don't know. Two versions of a stone church, forsaking the blood, the faraway names. What is my desire to understand protecting me from? If you try to hurt yourself before others get a chance, they've already broken you. <laughs> Everything that ever happened happens again each day. Undoing my birth is not enough. Undoing the colonial condition of my possibility is the only impossible option. Wow, that sounds like a Fred Moten quote. Noise is a gate we enter backwards. Time's no doctor but a slug. Willard Van Orman Quine calls everything that never happened the slum of possibles. That's where I'm from, undead echo. Take the kid out the slum, can't take the slum out the kid. Take the possible out of the slum, can't take the slum out of the possible. Okay. This is from Transgender, my second book. It's about the limits of language, how gender is colonial and white, and how black people are the best, obviously. Nobody agrees. <laughs> it's called, if I could vote, I'd not vote for Cardi B. Our lady of those bags full of other bags my mom always keeps under the kitchen sink back home. Help me be patient with the caveman is. The demon in my inner ear tells me that a lack of hell is robotic. She reminds me to celebrate the Titanic today. That's what you get for taunting God and masturbating with fancy sauce. Guilt is the, ang the fantasy I anchor myself with, a sanctuary of displaced landfills. As European labor cognitivizes, so too does alienation. Being white and Western means being alienated from how violent and wasteful your existence is. We faintly hear from far away some managerese about agile social workflow engagement rate application methodologies. Think of it as a claim to desublimation. In other words, white women tossed aside the wages for housework picket signs, entered the workforce and hire black and brown women to do domestic labor for almost nothing. Dope, wages for housework, they're just super low. The old American way, animal white infants suckling dark nipple, cooing for the absent referent, cuckold encased in amber. Yes, finally you've reached the poison. Tell me to say yes to the dress, to pursue a lean-in poetics by any means necessary. The fact is, not shaving is only feminist if you have a white pussy. I guess it's chill you identify as an animal, but get back to me when you often got called a monkey growing up. So forgive me if it seems like I'm humoring you. I know now to treat white people like pets. The trick is to put a Starbucks in the gulag. <laughs> Come on, that's fucking funny. What the fuck? I hate y'all, what the fuck? What the fuck? Nah, I'm playing around. It's not that funny. As Emma Dune says, living off borrowed time, the clock ticks faster. When you're stolen, you're stolen. All your affect is carceral. I know we see the blood of slaves and natives on these walls. All the undocumented maids in the country couldn't clean it. Not my mom, my sister, not me. So you treat self-actualization as a branding exercise. Bad faith is a trick of the light. 
Hope you don't see that same charred face you see every night like Baruch Spinoza in his study, hoping the world is an idea in God's mind. By the way, how are we going to live without phallic metaphors? Rehab is always an option. Concepts are the dream of the citizen. If I could vote, I would not vote for Cardi B. This is what they prepared you for. In your glee, you get deputized as a monster. All reverse empaths are fascists. That's the part where you clap. How long have I been going for? This is called Racism Money of the Real. Hey, LMAO, like a coup in the distance. Impending panic attack from a government form's length. The idea of being a citizen is depressing. The humor of Kafka or anything is the horrible fact of it being funny. My stomach turns on a dime. I puke out dead wings and bile. Real artists have hunger breath. <sighs> I'm not actually hungry. This phone was written a long time ago when I had no money. It's still real. It's been a slow give black people money month. Need to buy a replacement circular fluorescent light. Look at the glowing spider webs on the bomb. My PayPal is garageresidency at gmail.com. G-A-R-A-G-E-R-E-S-I-D-E-N-C-Y at sign gmail period com. Trying to find out whether I dated a literal Nazi. Also, one of those mail order DNA tests sounds fun. Who's paying? Let me Google that for you, Tragic Mulatto. I'm starting a new blog. It's about Wittgenstein's massive dick. I would, <laughs> I would kill myself, but like I'm too cool, also too lazy. I see your body tight like a noose around dark skin. You see my light skin and think we're the same. Maybe we are. You asked me to stretch you out, but suicide is expensive. Gender is expensive. Race is the money of the real. When the weed runs out, I feel death's chill. Where's the weed? <laughs> um, I guess I'll do one more. Um, actually, I'll read more new stuff. I kind of haven't read that that much. I think it's okay. I don't know. It's not as funny. Though. It's called The Palace. After our hesitant escape, autumn scavenges the water, rising to fathom and remove light. These are leaves, not shadows. <laughs> God, I love poetry. In stark filigree, you gnaw the drum. Clouds dive into soil beds to shed. You want to cling, but it is too shallow. That abyssal longing. The seasons speaking as glass bowls. These are leaves, not shadows. At the distended coast, the city fevers. It's full roads of little dishes and scorn. What the fuck? I feel like I was an asshole when I wrote this. This is, like, what the fuck? this is called Time is No Doctor. This is the second to last one. The air split the world in new and richer condemnation the last time we spoke. We saw voices trapped in a falling tooth, a river that could not bend. Two versions of a stone church. Trust nobody, not even nobody. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Synchrony recapitulates diachrony. Context is material. Lack of context to reverse pieta, Christ rebirthing his dead mother. A tongue nailed to the wall, covered in manteca de coro, could be more generative than anxiety. This is my last poem, it's called Soft Launch. This poem consists of the last thing you forgot. Thank you.
Mr. Dean Petway is next. They painted this amazing painting, the centerpiece of the show.
I want the work to give almost nothing, to offer an unsettling stasis. There is nothing to feel but her own emptiness. There has been a bloodletting, siphoned off affects that everything is blanched. Let me really see you. What are we dealing with here? A lot of this stuff is like really, it's like, like emo. And I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah. um, okay. I wanted to be free like you, and then it became apparent that you're free to meet you alive and chat you out of cold, shivering, Benjamin Button, ass shell of a human. But to be a shell, to be free, right? Maybe this is a negative Freudian thing where you, a shell of a human, are continually searching to fill yourself with my content. Um, so by intellectually filling me, yes, as hell, and heterosexual as it sounds, filling me with whatever it is you think you possess as a fraction of an overall desire to fill yourself with me. A hole fills a bigger hole left from an earlier when he's breaking. Anyway, I wanted to be free like you, and for the first time, acutely experience something like this lack I was supposed to have been able to know. Upon realization of my desire to fill myself with you, and this desire made cerebral, a lovely one for me, myself, and I, the concept of taking it beyond the notion of fantasy rendered it sterile. It's so really an awareness that your mind fuck would exceed your ability to actual fuck entirely. <laughs> anyway, experiencing myself as black, I used to dream myself into sucking you up and crushing you between my thighs, like crushing you entirely, and you choke for air. You disappear into me, and I come basically a normal amount of this. It's nothing spectacular. But like the boys I let fuck me in college, the ego triumph makes, you, makes the media with orgasm a fair enough trade. Maybe now you're a part of me, and our beings have melted, or maybe you're trapped somewhere inside me, suffering in confinement you only could have dreamed of before. On the coldest, loneliest nights, you imagine that I am some kind of automaton, and you are the motor that keeps me running. Soon afterward, you burst into tears, covering, powering in a fold of my intestine. You hope that childbirth will liberate you, and you will ride the coattails of my yet to be formed fetus out into the sunlight like a nasty little parasite. Again, you cry, who will phone you to tell you of the birth? But maybe your effect is not so obvious. You'll die somewhere inside me, but in years to come, they'll, they'll autopsy my aged body and find it riddled with an infection, you, that has slowly run across my organs. Nothing is recognizable, and they shake their heads. If only we had known sooner. This is like really very, very recent, like scraps of writing. Um, okay. If I had no bones, if I were a snake, no, if I had no bones, I'd wrap myself tightly around the void, you know, like a ghost with a sheet over it. Nothing to me seems like the most potent thing in the world. Anyway, I had a dream about a love affair with a Glock. Al asked me how I knew it was a Glock, but I just knew. My Glock and I ran around an open field with a band of boys. We were at war, I guess, for what I didn't know, but the gun was hot in my hand and my belly burned. This probably seems unpopular to say in times like these, but the whole thing made me want to go to the shooting range. We're going backwards. I'd like you to picture me rewinding. Other things I've thought about lately. Movies about men who love women in a totally objectifying way. Can I make a movie about or be a woman who loves men? What if she loves men as little objects? They're all humbling and unique at the same time, unoriginal, predictable. But she loves watching them in catalog the ways they move, which way their weight shifts, which hip they snap outward, whether they cross their arms a lot, sometimes or never. Alec and I went to the beach where we saw these skaters, like real skaters, not Lower East Side fanny pack guys, like dirty Venice wide pants. They stuck their boards in the sand like pylons and blasted funk music. I thought about how skaters are like vampires, they never seem to age, especially white ones in Los Angeles maybe, because whatever their age, the sun is cracked and scorched their skin, so at 19 they, look like, they sort of look 35, and then at 35 they might be able to pass for 19. These guys might have been 40, but in their world I'm not sure it will ever matter. Anyway, I made a lot of this up. I don't know a whole lot of standards. When I think about it, I don't think I've ever had sex with one. I had this dream about something, about, I had this dream about something, but in it there was this ongoing thread about pupils dilating. Like, I had to keep getting my pupils dilated, and my vague memory, in my vague memory, it had to do with the disguise. This got me thinking again about cameras focusing and refocusing. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this. I know that it is interesting. I guess it could be a little bit about animism. It's like the camera struggles to do the one thing it's supposed to do. The focus pull not only calls attention to the material apparatus of the camera, but to the camera's built-in desire. Robert Morris said that thing about minimalist art focusing on the conditions under which certain kinds of objects are seen, and so I guess here we are. I've learned that I'm not really that interested in history, but rather its nature, like how it functions. I learned to tell you that I learned how, learned how to tell you that I'm not interested in showing and telling, but in sight and communication. I figured out that I'm interested in annihilation, but it's probably a worse or better situation than you thought. I've been thinking about this idea of stone cold, stone faced sorcery and presence without narrative and still becoming a machine. I can't do it on my own. I was never alone to begin with. Baby our whole machine would have made more sense. Baby is a haunted house. Anyway, I wanted to be a machine, so I made this one. And I thought about the outside, and I never turned it out. That's it.